so what you need to do is to select your target you want to the, the architecture you want to target um, and then just read from there so I'm currently at 32-bit Intel but I want to target 64-bit so that's the one I click on and you can see it look it takes you to a more familiar table of contents um, looks a bit more like the um, normal Linux from scratch um, book now, I um, have to say, cross links from scratch, it's probably because I don't do it very often. I've probably only do it less than a hand, done it less than a handful of times. Um, it can be quite involved. It needs a lot of wits to make sure the mistakes aren't made. There's some, a choice to be made. Um, it is obviously a very complicated thing to do, um, to compile a com completely alien code. Um, although arguably what I'm going to be creating is not completely alien because it's still for Intel stroke AMD um, architecture um, but it's alien enough that a 32-bit machine wouldn't be able to run anything that's um, been compiled for 64-bit Intel um, oh yes another thing I should mention um, don't go for the multi-lib because Linux from scratch is pure 32-bit or pure 64-bit there's no capability for multi-lib um, as I think it suggests in the newer versions, that would require a rebuilding of uh, most of the libraries twice, once for the 32-bit and once for the 64-bit. Um, so you've got to choose either pure 32-bit or pure 64-bit. Well, why would you choose 32-bit if you're starting with 32-bit? So, yeah, in this case, pure 64-bit. Um so there's some preparation that needs to be done beforehand. Um, I actually had to compile a new kernel on the previous machine, which was a Pentium 4. I've decided to move on to a newer machine. The, I had a couple of other machines around this time, the time of this cross Linux from scratch, but unfortunately they're in use at the moment with um, other, other projects I've got on the go. So I've not been able to use them. So what I've um, got here is something that's from about 2009 or so. So it's about four, maybe five years older than Cross Linux and Scratch we're going to be building. Uh, but newer than Linux and Scratch 6.3. Uh, it's a Core 2 Duo. Um, I think it's got, I can't remember if it's got two cores or if it's a single core with hyper-threading. Um, but it's certainly got two cores, but it is a core, so it should be a little bit faster and um, run a little bit cooler um, and probably less energy required to compile this than the Pentium 4, which um, was around the time where Intel's were known for the heat generated um, with very little gain in power uh, comparative to other processors at the time. So, yeah, it's a, a so-called 2 duo that I'm um, going to be building this on. The kernel, as it was for the Pentium 4 on LFS 6.3, didn't boot on this machine. It just calls a solid freeze, uh, not even a panic. Uh, the kernel didn't panic at all, and which required a, a power off to get control of the machine back. So what I did, I compiled a new kernel on that machine but it didn't look like it had the um, wherewithal for the newer hardware in this Core 2 Duo, which has got an ICH10 chipset. Um, it looked like the kernel 2.6.22.5 that came with LFS 6.3 only supported up to ICH8, so I suspected that's why it wouldn't boot, although I was a little surprised that it didn't boot. I thought it might be... Uh, com some compatibility there. So what I did, I recompiled with um, the kernel version from Cross Linux from scratch, which is 3.14.21. Um, but that in itself entailed some problems, which I got around. But that's what's um, booted here at the moment. So if I actually... Um, oh, if I get onto that machine... That's probably the best thing. Let me get rid of this. Come 
come out of that. So I'll have to go again through my um, Pension Pro to piggyback on that to get to this um, LFS 6.3 as I have done all the time um, because of, well, initially because Telnet is insecure, it's not really provided anymore as a daemon, it's not uh, recommended and possibly not even a, a Telnet client program either. Um, and more recently, with recent versions I've been building, SSH hasn't got the latest um, encryption or ciphers to use with modern machines, so I, I'm still using the Pentium Pro to piggyback, which is um, currently using Linux from Scratch 10. So that's enabled me to use that. I believe the latest version, yes, I wouldn't be able to do this at all. Um, probably not even without a fix that I've got, um, which I'll show you. So I've had to put this fix in here, create this config file in .ssh and put these bits of information in um, to allow me to get access to the machine. In fact, I'm going to have to modify that as well because I've just been changing the host name this morning because it's a different machine it's going to have a different IP address etc a different host name on the network so I do actually need to modify this to include that so let me do that now so so let's copy all of this Right, so the host is, uh, let me just double check it, 52, so let's change that. Each of these I need to gain access to the machine, depending on how I gain access to the machine. So unfortunately I need one for every name that's used to access the machine. So that's that. Um, yeah, so let me get into the um, so SSH root at E7500. Yeah, that's worked. Okay. Right, the first thing I'm going to do, I can see straight away all I've got is a prompt that says bash, which doesn't tell me where I am or anything. So first thing I'm going to do is to modify the... Um, bash profile for the root user and put in um, export ps1 equals quotes um, backslash user uh, at slash host and then the working directory followed by a hash to show that I'm root and that should be enough so if I source that it should update yep so that's a bit better now I know where I am so um, there's two issues with the kernel that I built um, well there's several issues actually one of which I noticed um, is that although there's only one Ethernet adapter and the kernel sees it as um, just a single Ethernet adapter, uh, I'm doing crap. Uh, as you can see there, for some reason it appears as Ethernet 1, and I don't know why that is. So, um, whether that's something to do with UDEV getting something wrong or a configuration problem with UDEV or something else is happening I don't really know so I had to rename the um, scripts the network scripts to use Ethernet 1 rather than Ethernet 0 um, as you can see it, it enables or it finds Ethernet 0 and then some somewhere it gets renamed to Ethernet 1 and then this is the 
output to the kernel of the link being brought up as Ethernet 1. Um, it fails if I leave it as Ethernet 0, so I don't understand what's gone wrong there. If it's a kernel setting, I don't know. Um, I'll probably investigate that offline before we build the kernel for the final system. Um, otherwise, it's something I'll have to bear in mind if, if I can't find out what that is. Um, so that yeah, that's one little problem. The other problem is I remembered that um, I hadn't updated the because this machine's got um, 16 gig of memory. I think it is. Um, I've still only got three and a half gig available. Um, so I've probably still got the small memory model set in the kernel. So I am still limited by that and the rest of the memory is going to be wasted. So although I'm on 32-bit, I should be able to set a PAE or equivalent setting to allow more of the memory to be used. Um, still limited to 4 gig boundary, but more chunks of it as virtual memory should be allowed. Um, so I need to change that, really. Um, so what I thought I'd do is show you that to show you what I had to do to get the kernel built on the original Linux from Scratch machine, the Linux from Scratch 6.3. Um, because I'm now on this newer machine with that kernel that I built, um, but like I say, I, I misbuilt it, I built it wrong, or missed parts of it, um, I thought it would be um, useful to show you that because it wasn't particularly straightforward um, because of, A, I've jumped quite a lot in time. So Linux from Scratch 6.3 was from... Um, around 2007, I think it was, and we're now dealing with software from 2014, so it's about a seven-year jump. It's quite a significant um, amount of time um, for packages to be updated and for you know, methods to be changed. And one of those methods is that a lot of these packages for Linux from scratch, uh, sorry, cross Linux from scratch 3, are compressed with XZUtils, and we haven't got XZ utils at all. Uh, so that's one issue that needs to be overcome. So what I thought I'd do, first of all, is to straight away create a partition to put um, the new Linux from scratch on, uh, across Linux from scratch, and also to create the, um, use it as a temporary area to create this new kernel, which I'll boot from. Um, one other thing I've got, I've got a new disk, it's an SSD, so I wasn't sure if that would be appropriate, but I was thinking around 2013, 2014, I guess was probably when the first SSDs were being made available around that sort of time, it might have been around, around for a year or two maybe, um, so this particular model might not have been available at that time, but it certainly would have been SSDs available, and as you can see it works anyway, which is what you'd expect, it's effectively no different as far as the uh, software is concerned, to hard disk. Um, so that shouldn't cause any problems. So let's start by creating a partition. Uh, SDA we want. So there's our partitions. Now when I was testing this, I started off with a 2 gig partition. I have been not realising that um, as I say, this is from 2014, this is going to be. This is another 14, 15 years on from the first Linux from scratch. Um, and I ran out of space, so I thought, right, I'll double it to 4 gig. That wasn't enough either. Um, and I found out that 6 gig was just about enough to build uh, cross Linux from scratch on. The reason is that GCC, with the tests, with the testing in the final part of the uh, build, needs 3 gigabytes alone. So you can see why even four gigabytes wasn't enough um, with all the other stuff that you need to have lying around. So what I'm going to do here is create an eight gig partition just to make sure I've got plenty of room because I'm going to be building another kernel. I'll probably keep it around for the time being while I'm building. Um, so I want to make sure I've got plenty of room. So plus eight gig print that up and uh, as you can see it so I'll write that to disk um, still uses the old table so what I'm going to do now is to reboot and 
wait for that to come up. Now, so there's a couple of problems. Um, one is XZ doesn't exist on the system. So we're going to have to build XZ at some time. XZ utils. Um, the other problem is when you compile the um, Linux kernel 3, or at least this version, 3.14.21, it needs BC uh, to compile. When I compiled it the first time, the kernel compiled in two minutes, I thought, wow, that's quick. Didn't realize this core 2 duo was uh, that much quicker. Um, and when I went to look for the kernel file, it wasn't there, and it's because... It apparently, as far as I could see, it failed without producing an error. Yet when I ran, reran make, it then came out with an error saying BC was missing. So whether that error had failed way back or I don't know what happened. Um, but yeah, as soon as I installed BC, um, everything worked fine. Right, so that machine's come back up again. So let's get back into that and just check our disk layout again so there it is so I'm going to um, create a partition on there now I'm not sure I think the new version of E2FS utils that we're going to be building does support EXT4 the kernel certainly does but I'm not sure if we've got that as a possibility with 6.3 it's probably still too early so I'm just going to try that. No, it's not there. Whereas ext3 is, so we're going to have to format this as ext3 still, which is not a big deal, but it's nice to use the latest stuff if you can. So let's do that. Mkfs dot ext4. I'll use it. Sorry, ext3. I'll create this in the uh, different way. Slash dash slash sda. 10 let's make sure in fact what I should do is highlight it and paste it to ensure there's no errors uh, for example if I missed there's naught off I'd be formatting part partition one which is not what I want to do okay so that nice and quick because as I say we're on the SSD so the next thing I'm going to do is to mount SDA 10 at um, we haven't got an even got an LFS yet, have we? Um, in fact, it's going to be called CLFS. Let's do it without the environment variables for the moment, and then we'll go through the book to fix that. So, mount slash dev slash sta10 at MNT CLFS, CD CLFS. Uh, okay, CD MNT CLFS. Okay, so let's see, we've got 6.9 gig free. So the first thing I need to do is to get hold of the kernel. Um, so let's get links up and running. And you can see there at the bottom, as I said, I was initially going to target LFS 7.7 .7 as the next build um, until I decided that I wanted to uh, stick with or, or go go with 64-bit, which led me on to CLFS. Now, as I say, there's lots of bits and bobs uh, needed to deal with here. Um, I'll just go through these things. Um, Yeah, so what I've done here, is things like um, the Linux kernel, um, the patch for the kernel, are actually tarred up as XZ. So if I go into the list of all the packages here, um, yeah, see so Linux is tarred up as an XZ. We haven't got XZ at the moment. So um, what I did was I just uncompress them and recompress the tarball with um, as you can see bzip um, and 
as I say, for the host system requirements, we're going to have to install XZ anyway. And that, funnily enough, was compressed with XZ. So it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation. So I had to, again, recompress that as a BZ2 just so I could extract it on this machine um, to um, uh, extract the files. In fact, I just thought what I might do is start building because although I've got the kernel rezipped as a BZ2, I'm going to have to build XZ anyway. I may as well just download the original tarballs um, and use them with um, a temporary copy of XZ. So I think I'll, what I'll do is I'll start going through the, the book. Um, I'll just skip through and yeah, straight straight into host system requirements actually. So let's go into CL, oops, CLFS. Do everything here, keep everything nice and tidy. So I'm just going to create a directory called pre CLFS for the work I need to do before I actually start on the book properly. Um, And I'll start by putting this script in so we can see what versions of the files we've got. Paste that in and run it. And let's now go through and check the releases. Right, yeah, there's actually one thing we need to change to that script. It says here the witch cannot be found. Um, and I can't remember reading anywhere that it says that you need witch installed. So when you look at the script where the witch command is running, it's this bit here. All that does is return the path of the shell. So the shell environment variable is set to bin bash, and that's all that wish, witch does. So what I did with the script was to cheat a little bit. Um, What's this called? Version check. I edited it and just changed the witch to an echo just to produce the same result. And that did the job. So if I now rerun this command here, you'll see it works correctly now. We haven't got any error apart from the fact that XZ hasn't been found. So let's go through and just double check the versions. As I say, I've already checked this, they should all tie up, but let's just be sure. So we need bash version two, we've got three. We need binutils 2.12, we've got 2.17. Bison 1.8275, we've got 2.3. Bzip 102, we've got 104. Core utils 5, we've got 6.9. Diffutils 2.8, we've got 2.81. Uh, find utils 4120, we've got 42.31. Orc or Gork, we've got th 315 is required, and that's actually what we've got. The compiler is 412, and again, that's exactly what we've got. Same with G. The GNU library. C library, we need 2.2.5, and we've got 2.51, so that's fine. Grep, we've got 2.51, we need 2.5, so again, we've got a newer version. Gzip is 1.2.4, we've got 1.3.12, so that's okay. Make, 3.80, we've got 3.81. Encurse is 5.3, we've got 5.6. Patch 2.5.4 is exactly the same. Said 302, we've got version 4, so that's fine. Tar 1.22, we've only got 1.18, so we need to update that. And text info, we need 4.7, we've got 4.9. And as you've seen, we need XZ utils at least 4.999.8 beta, and we haven't got it at all. So basically, to get the system up to scratch, we need to reinstall tar with the newer version so i'll use the version that came 
we, it all comes with CLFS 3.0.0 and XZ I'll need to install as well. So I think what I'll do to start off with is to get links up again. Uh, let's put that in the URL actually because I'm bound to be going here more than once. So first of all, I'm going to download the packages as we'll need stuff out of there. So let's get the MD5. package tarball. Um, yeah, one thing is interesting. When you follow the links on the CLFS web page to get the packages, it appears, and it's the same as on the mirrors, that the GCC compiler package is missing for some reason. So um, I don't know why that is, if it's deliberate or if um, it's an oversight that's just been um, just cascaded everywhere to all the mirrors. Um, I don't know, so I had to go and get this off the GNU.org website separately. Um, but it all checked out anyway, the MD5's matched and so on. Um, so yeah, it's a bit strange. Um, the fact that that has, um, you know, existed, if that is a, an error, it's existed to this day, but then I suppose if the project's effectively been abandoned in terms of stable releases um, kind of understand it um, so the next thing I need is XZ which is in here so let's get that this is XZ I've recompiled with oh, sorry recompressed with in bz2 format so let's download that and I shouldn't need anything else um, because I'm already running the version the new version of the kernel I shouldn't need anything else here really because what I'll do is I'll install XZ first of all and then that means I can extract everything else. I've just prepared these things here, um, perhaps unnecessarily. So I think that should be all I need. So yeah, I think the first thing I'm going to do is to... build XZ because that leads me into extracting anything that I want to. Um, uh, let me think. Let's just move on a little bit. We know what we want to do. Structure, errata. Oh, one thing that's worth mentioning, when, if I get the packages extracting, I should have checked that. You might notice some packages, if you've been used to compiling Linux from scratch on an Intel, you might notice some packages that you don't recognize. Um, and that's because they're, uh, I think they're mostly bootloaders for the different architectures. So the Grub, um, bootloader is used for Intel and then um, there's one used for Spark and so on so that's why those packages are in there and if you find they're not being used because you're on the Intel don't worry about it they're not needed for the Intel architecture so let's just move on so yeah preparing for the build so let's get this set so I'll use that because that's what I've created. Um, and I'll also set it in my bash profile as well. So that if I need to log on again, which will happen because I'm going to recompile a new kernel, it will already be set. Uh, for that matter, I think I'll 
add the new partition to FS tab as well. So SDA 10 will get mounted at um, MNT CLFS. And it's an EXT3 mounted with defaults. And we'll put that in. All right, looks like you can't put a three in there, so let's put a two in. Okay, so if I source that and echo, yeah, they also use the environment variables in, I think that's the modern way of referring to them with the curly brackets. Um, throughout, which is the way I try to do it because it makes it more obvious, um, I think, as to what uh, you're actually doing with the name. So yeah, MNT CLFS, that's where we are. Create a new partition, we've done that. Uh, in actual fact, I think it's suggested how big there. Oh, it says 2 to 10 gig with additional software. So, yes, yeah, so I recommend or well, 6 gig absolute minimum, um, probably 8 gig for a bit of wiggle room. <clears throat> so, we've done all that. We've created a partition. We should have a swap space already because we've booted a Linux from scratch 6.3. Yeah, we have. We probably don't need it. Um, but there's a bit there in case we do. Um, mount a new partition. This is for additional um, mounts that you might want. So we'll leave that. Packages. So let's do this bit in preparation. Sources. So... I've just extracted the sources. I'm going to move them all from CLFS into sources. Uh, let's just double check that. It should be all right. Oh, I thought that had come down with BZ2 on the end. I'm not sure what I did there. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's okay. Right, so... Um, I need to move the GCC tarball into there as well. Okay, so that's looking good. Um, yeah, there is... Uh, if I just go into there, let's push the... to do that really actually did I yeah there's a SHA sums SHA1 sums and an MD5 sum there so you can run MD5 sum to check the individual packages and likewise you can do the same with a SHA1 sum if you really want to uh, on the correct file though So everything matches. As I say, I found out that the GCC tarball wasn't there when I ran that. And that, Well, in fact, I think it's even missing from the MD5. Yeah, there's a patch there. Another patch. Another patch. Another patch. Yeah, it's not there at all. So it's even missing from, so I think it's obviously a mistake that it's been missed. Um, therefore, the MD5 sum and uh, SHA-1 sum haven't even been updated. 
so it's just a little peculiarity. Uh, but luckily, as I say, it's easy enough to get hold of. Just go to the GNU um, website, and in fact, it's got an FTP direct link there to get hold of it. And as I say, the uh, MD5 some checked out for it. So if I check it, uh, GCC for as you can see, 7C60, 7C60, and it ends in 110F, 110F. So yeah, it's fine. Uh, so because we're on the Intel additional package is Grub uh, like I say for the different architectures this this will be different there's all the patches some additional patches which again are all in the pack the download Right, so I'll leave it there and I'll go back to the pre-CLFS directory and um, extract XZ, XVF, XZ, and start building this. And I'll use this as a crib. I think I can just compile this in a straightforward manner. Yeah, I think so. So if I do configure prefix, let's have a look at my notes actually. Uh, equals, and I'm going to put it into MNT CLFS, pre CLFS, uh, into a bin. Uh, no, I won't. I'll call it. What shall I call it? Pre CLFS. Let's call it extra. Um. Oh yes, that's what I did. I put it in the directory called Tools. Uh, tools 2. So we're going to be using Tools. Um, but as you'll see, the way that Cross Linux and Scratch is built, um, these files may interfere with that. So what I did is created a separate uh, Tools 2 directory to put XZ and TAR into. So... Um, it kind of pollutes the host system a little bit, but then we are creating a tools directory anyway, um, and it can be easily got rid of at any time afterwards anyway, because it's only going to have X and Tar in. Um, so this is the way I decided to to do this. Uh, do it like this uh, right let me just get my I've not been following my notes so far and it looks like I've been skipping some bits so let's go Oh yes, one thing I should mention, one reason it would be a good idea to update TAR, it's probably not needed, but it does give TAR the ability to automatically ex expand XZ files, which it can't do um, otherwise because it, it's not aware of it at the current version, so that's another reason for updating it anyway. Um Yeah. Right, where am I? Four up two, okay, mount camera three to one. Right, 
Right, yes. Okay, so for Doctor, we'll carry on with what I'm doing here. Um, what I've got to do is let's tidy this up. If we look at the root, you'll see there's a tools directory there because that's the tools that was created when Beyond Linux, uh, sorry, from when Linux and Scratch 6.3 was being built. So we need to get rid of that. Uh, well, we can rename it if you wish to, but it's very little point in keeping that hanging around. So we'll get rid of that because we need to put a link to the tools um, that's going to be created for Cross Linux from Scratch. Um, let's just check see if we've got CPU ID, CPU info rather. No, let's just have a look at CPU proc CPU info. Just verify that. Yes, got two cores, and it does look like they are individual cores rather than hyper threading what I can tell from that. Core ID 0 and Core ID 1. Okay, so yeah, there's two um, cores available. So I'll just check what I've got make flag set to. Yeah, I've set it to J2, so that's fine. Um, so as I say, I'm going to install XZ and TAR into Tools 2 because um, we'll need both of them while we're building, but I don't want them to interfere with the tools that's going to be created uh, during the first stage of Cross Linux and Scratch. Um, it might not make any difference, but uh, to be sure, I, I didn't want to have them uh, interfering. So what I'm going to do is to do mkdir dollar clfs tools 2 and this is a bit like how the tools is created here uh, in fact they've used install and then a link to the tools and I'm going to do the same thing a link to tools 2 to the root so if we look at the root now you can see we've got two links, the tools, which is what Cross Linux and Scratch is going to use to set up the initial stages, and this tools too, which is what I'm going to use to uh, install a, an initial version of XZ and TAR. Um, and I'm going to do Chone. In fact, I'll move on. Oh, yes, we also need a cross tools directory. Oops. And a link to that on the root. So you can see we've got that directory there as well. Um, we'll create the CLFS user next. Add a password. change ownership of these directories and I'll do the same for the tools too change ownership of the sources directory and become the CLFS user and now we set up the environment for the CLFS user and source that so we should get a prompt telling us where we are i'm going to edit the bash rc and add in another uh, not an export uh, it's the path sorry i'm going to add into the path forward slash tools to forward slash bin so that our uh, 
should that be at the beginning? Yes, it should. Cross tools bin, is bin. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I want it at the beginning because I want it to find the tar before it finds the one on the actual system. So uh, yes, I do want it at the beginning of that path. So I'll save that. Um, so I've got now to build the um, XZ. So I'll just change into sources. Uh, no, I won't. I'll change into the pre-CLFS because I need to extract this version of it because XZ doesn't exist on the system at the moment. Right, and this is because I'm in the root environment. So, okay, let's go back to sources and extract. And I've got my notes, I've adapted this from chapter six. So let's go to there. Right, so let's just check these are set. Right, they're not actually set yet. All oh, right, okay, yeah, we've still got some more work to do actually. So export that. So this is all configuring the target system uh, that we're going to be building for. So they're important variables. They get added to the environment. So that if we leave the uh, CLFS user, they'll get set. So the first bit is making the cross compile tools. Uh, and in fact, in fact, if I go to the first one, there's some information about how this all works. Um, Adapted from chapter six. Uh, oh, I don't need that. Um, no, actually, I don't think I need to do it from chapter six. It would be more appropriate to follow. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's not quite like chapter six. I've actually put notes down of what commands I did. So I'll leave that there. Um, right. Yeah, what I did was configure prefix equals four slash tools two. Um, and if I just check my path. Yes, I see. I've updated the wrong path, I think. Uh, right, let me just source. That's better. Right, I didn't source the bash RC. That's, that's right now. 
So yeah, to be sure, I'm going to log out, log back in again as CLFS. Oops. Change to CLFS again. Uh, where was I? Sources XZ echo dollar path. Yes, that's right. So tools to bin is in the path. That's correct. So I should be able to now find that configure command. For some reason hasn't kept it. Okay. So I'll rerun this config or run this configure command to configure XZ. Build it. And uh, make install and with any luck this should be going into um, tools 2 and yes everything's going into tools 2 so that's good so it now means if I type xz minus minus version yeah we've now got an xz on the system so I'll tidy that up and now I can immediately install tar um, so if I try to run tar on the new tar, which is itself is a XZ file, you'll see it doesn't recognize the format of the XZ file because it's an older version of tar. So what I'll have to do is do XZ minus D for decompile, uh, sorry, de decompress, C to output to the standard out, the tar ball, and then pipe it through tar and extract. So there's the new version of tar. Um, I think this was adapted from chapter six. Take a look. Yeah, there's some changes here. It says it cannot determine the result of a few tests. So I imagine that's when it's doing the configure. So I did actually put this in. And then I ran configure prefix equals four slash tools two. And then added in this cache file. It calls config.cache. I'll just check the prefix. Prefix equals tools two. And build it. And install it, and again, hopefully we'll see it go into tools too. Yeah, all the files have gone into tools too, so that's good. So now, if we do tar minus minus version, you can see we've got the newer version there as well. And to test it, we can try and extract the tarball of tar itself which was an XZ and you can see it's now extracting itself so that's all working fine so that's the preparation for the tools done so what I now need to do is to I'll come out of the CLFS and I'll build the kernel and to, to make the changes Um, yeah, so I'll extract that here, I think.
Right, and the root doesn't know about this, does it? Right, okay. So, let's go back to CLFS. Oops. I'll extract it here. And I'll need to go to the kernel headers to get a hint on how to extract the patch file. So this is the, the way they've done this. This is the base Linux 3.14 version. Um, and rather than provide the 3.14.21 uh, version of the whole package, They've obviously just kept the base version and they've just updated with the patch uh, patches that are supplied by the kernel.org to bring it up to what was then the current version. So if I put this command in, it should uh, patch this version of the kernel to the newer version 3.14.21. So now what I'm going to do is to move that into pre-CLFS. Okay, I'll have to be root to do that. So I'll move sources Linux 3.14, move that here, and I'll change it to root owner as well. And we can start diddling with this now. So let's get rid of that to make MR proper. Oh, one thing we haven't done is built BC. Uh, yeah, I need to build BC next to be able to compile this. So let's become the root again. Uh, sorry, CLFS again. And let's see if we can find something about BC somewhere. Just I think I can just compile it with some standard configure make install. Yeah, in fact, I think I will. So tar minus XVF BC. LCD BC. So configure. Let's find another configure that has worked. Save me. Um, doing any typos. So configure prefix equals tools two. Make and make install. So actually, before I do that, if I type BC version, we haven't got BC. I now install it. We've now got a, a working BC. Um. So I've just thought I do need to Yeah, I would actually need to do this as CLFS because CLFS has got the correct path. So um I'm gonna change this back to CLFS CLFS Oops Why do I keep doing that? So CD back to the pre-LFS into Linux. Right, now should be able to do make MR proper. And segcat proc config. So this is the existing uh, configuration for the kernel that's running, which means all I need to do is just tweak the premises that I want to tweak. Let's just check that looks like it is the correct one. So yes, 3.14.21, and if I do you name minus A, you can see it's the same as what I'm running at the moment. So make old config. That's all right. There are lots of warnings that come up when I build this, but 
uh, as I say, the only failure I had was lack of PC. So that's all okay. Make menu config. So, right, so the thing I need to set up here is the memory model. Which is not there. Right, I might actually set that option as well when I'm here. Right, memory model help. Right, so 32 bit processor and between 1 and 4 gigabytes of physical RAM. And more than, right, yeah, so I'm, I'm fairly certain this has got more than 4 gigs, this machine. Uh, so I think it's got 64 gigs, so that's the bit I wanted to, to set. And you can see it's set that PAE option. Um, you see, if I turn it back off, it's gone. So that's that's what I expect to see, so that's good. Um, another thing I want to do is just check the networking because as I say it's, um, I'll turn the wireless off, don't need that, uh, device drivers, yeah well, I can't explain why that is, uh, Unless it's that. Right, let's turn that off. Right, okay, so I'll see how we go with that. So I think this took about 15 minutes, was it, I think. Right, I've done so many compiling on different machines recently, I'm losing track as to what... Uh, how long things took, but um, it's certainly going to take a, a, at least a few minutes.
Right, so that has compiled. Um, what I'm going to do now is to copy these images or this Linux image onto the uh, boot partition so that I can boot from it. So I need to come out of CLFS, mount the boot. Just check that, yep. So I need to copy the arch. Oh, let's go to the directory first. I386 is an image to the boot and overwrite VM Linux dash 3.1. Uh, yeah, by the way, I forgot to mention again, uh, you probably noticed loads of warnings and say nothing to worry about. It does produce a, a working kernel. So that's a little concern. CP system dot map to boot system map three and CP dot config to boot config three. So that should be all I need to do. So I'll unmount the boot. Unmount CLFS and do a reboot. And wait for it to come back. <coughs> 